we have been reading from the Manual for Teachers of A Course in Miracles, and uh, I have been skipping around a little bit. <clears throat> right now, I am going to be reading from section 14, and <clears throat> the question of this section is, how will the world end? Can what has no beginning really end? The world will end in an, in an illusion as it began. Yet will its ending be an illusion of mercy. The illusion of forgiveness, complete, excluding no one, limitless in gentleness, will cover it, hiding all evil, concealing all sin, and ending guilt forever. So ends the world that guilt had made, for now it has no purpose and is gone. The father of illusions is the belief that they have a purpose, that they serve a need or gratify a want. Perceived as purposeless, they are no longer seen. Their uselessness is recognized and they are gone. How but in this way are all illusions ended? They have been brought to truth and truth saw them not. It merely overlooked the meaningless. Until forgiveness is complete, the world do does have a purpose. It becomes the home in which forgiveness is born and where it grows and becomes stronger and more all-embracing. Here is it nourished, for here it is needed. A gentle savior, born where sin was made and guilt seemed real. Here is his home, for here there is need of him indeed. He brings the ending of the world with him. It is, it is his call, God's teacher's answer, turning to him in silence to receive his word. The world will end when all things in it have been rightly judged by his judgment. The world will end with the benediction of holiness upon it. When not one thought of sin remains, the world is over. It will not be destroyed, nor attacked, nor even touched. It will merely cease to seem to be. Certainly this seems to be a long, long while away. When not one thought of sin remains, appears to be a long-range goal indeed. But time stands still and waits on the goal of God's teachers. Not one thought of sin will remain the instant any one of them accepts atonement for himself. It is not easier to forgive one sin than to forgive all of them. The illusion of orders of difficulty is an obstacle the teacher of God must learn to pass by and leave behind. One sin perfectly forgiven by one teacher of God can make salvation complete. Can you understand this? No, it is meaningless to anyone here. Yet, it is the final lesson in which unity is restored. It goes against all the thinking of the world, but so does heaven. The world will end when its thought system has been completely reversed. Until then, bits and pieces of its thinking will still seem sensible. The final lesson which brings the ending of the world cannot be grasped by those not yet prepared to leave the world and go beyond its tiny reach. What then is the function of the teacher of God in this concluding lesson? He need merely learn how to approach it to be willing to go in its direction. He need merely trust that if God's voice tells him it is a lesson he can learn, he can learn it. He does not judge it either as hard or easy. His teacher points to it and he trusts that he will show him how to learn it. The world will end in joy because it is a place of sorrow. When joy has come, the purpose of the world has gone. The world will end in peace because it is a place of war. When peace has come, what is the purpose of the world? The world will end in laughter because it is a place of tears. Where there is laughter, who can longer weep? And only complete forgiveness brings all this to bless the world. In blessing it departs, for it will not end as it began. To turn hell into heaven is the function of God's teachers, for what they teach are lessons in which heaven is reflected. And now sit down in true hum humility and realize that all God would have you do, you can do. Do not be arrogant and say you cannot learn his own curr curriculum. His word says otherwise. His will be done, it cannot be otherwise. And be you thankful it is so. <clears throat> 
How will the world end? Is the question of this section. Um, I want to I want to mention something interesting in the second paragraph of this section. Um, I'll, I'll I'll go back to talk about the first, but I just wanted to to bring this up. Jesus says here. Until forgiveness is complete, the world does have a purpose. Purpose is, is talked about a lot here and in, in the course as a whole. You know, what is the purpose of the world? Well, the purpose from our perspective is, especially, you know, once we find, find this teaching, this, this course, the purpose becomes forgiveness, finding complete forgiveness, right? Accepting the atonement for ourself, which means complete forgiveness. Um, so Jesus says, until forgiveness is complete, the world does have a purpose. <clears throat> it becomes the home in which forgiveness is born and where it grows and becomes stronger and more all-embracing. Okay, so, so, so Jesus brings in, this is the beginning of, of the second paragraph, and Jesus brings in the idea of complete forgiveness. Forgiveness is born, right? And it, and it grows, <laughs> Grow stronger and more all embracing. Here is it nourished, for here it is needed. It's like a child, you know, forgiveness. <laughs> and then he goes, then all of a sudden he switches the language a little bit and he says, A gentle savior, <laughs> born where sin was made and guilt seemed real. So now the forgiveness, you know, this, this is a little shift here that's interesting. Now forgiveness becomes the savior, right? Born in the manger of the world, nourished and growing in strength and power um, as as you practice as you practice the course, you know, as you as you take this seriously and as you trust in God's word, and, and God's word says that this is indeed possible. You know, we think from our perspective we cannot understand. All, what all this means and, and how it's, you know, if it's really true um, that, that, that the world will end in an illusion. And what does that even mean? You know, an illusion of mercy, an, an illusion of forgiveness. So keep in mind that, that Jesus says, not here, well, kind of here actually, but he says somewhere else that forgiveness is also an illusion, right? Forgiveness is the, is the one illusion that takes you beyond all other illusions. So, so forgiveness is 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 also an illusion, though. And in 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 the reality, which is God, forgiveness is completely unnecessary. It's not even understood. It's not even it's not even a thing. But in our reality, forgiveness is the most important thing. Um, it, it it is the key to awakening, it is the key to happiness, it is the key to knowing our true self, who we, who we truly are. Um, so, so forgiveness here becomes the savior, you see, now, so Jesus is talking about, he's not talking about himself he's, as the savior, he's talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness is the savior. Um, a gentle savior born where sin was made and guilt seemed real. Here is his home, for here there is need of him indeed. He brings the ending of the world with him. It is his call, God's teacher's answer, turning to him in silence to receive his word. word. Now, obviously, you know, when, when Jesus uses all caps like he does, he does here, um, he's really talking about the Holy Spirit, which is the symbol of forgiveness, actually, and Jesus as well. You know, Jesus is a manifestation. Jesus became one with the Holy Spirit. That's... That's what Jesus says somewhere else, is that um, Jesus became one with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is, is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Um, they, they are, for all intents and purposes, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are, are, are the same. They are the teachers of, of true forgiveness, of complete forgiveness. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting way that, that Jesus is putting this he makes he starts with forgiveness but then he makes and then he turns the forgiveness into talking about you know the holy spirit um but but the reality is it doesn't it doesn't matter you know the the 
whatever name you give to it, it's the same thing, right? Um, the world will end when all things in it have been rightly judged by his judgment. The world will end with the benediction of holiness upon it. When not one thought of sin remains, the world is over. It will not be destroyed, nor attacked, nor even touched. And this is important. This is important uh, in the sense that um, this is not a course that's telling us to destroy the ego, <laughs> or to fight the ego, or the ego is your enemy, or the ego um, that somehow you need to do spiritual warfare against the ego. Right or, or or against other people's egos, um, no. Um, it will merely cease to seem to be. So, <clears throat> as you practice forgiveness, the ego is dissolved. Basically, the ego is undone. It's not that you're attacking the ego, and it's not you know it's not that you're um, actively trying to destroy the ego. <laughs> it's more that you are just seeing things more and more correctly, right? You're seeing things more and more in alignment with truth, in alignment with true forgiveness, in alignment with, you know, the Holy Spirit and Jesus, basically. And again, th those are just terms for, for non-judgment for, uh, and forgiveness. Um, third paragraph, this seems to be a long way away. Um, and, he, and, he, and Jesus says, the world will end when one teacher of God accepts the atonement for himself. Now that is, that is a bizarre, <laughs> from our perspective, that, that, that's, that's crazy. You know, it's like, how can one, how can the world end if, if just one teacher accepts the atonement? Um, and didn't Jesus already accept the atonement? <laughs> so that, that that might be the way to look at it. Is is like you, you could say, well, didn't didn't Jesus already accept the atonement? So so isn't the world already over? And 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 and, and the answer is yes. <laughs> so I think that's the that 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 really is the answer here um, of 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 trying to understand what he's saying, which is. The world is already over. And Jesus actually says somewhere in the Course, you know, this world was over long ago. Um, it's one of the, the great lines in, in the Course is, uh, this world was over long ago. The world never actually even happened. <laughs> that's, that, that's the other part of it, is that, that if it's an illusion, it, it, it never really happened. It only seems to, to, to have happened. Um, and it's already been um, it's already been saved, you know, so to speak. <laughs> so, so there's no nothing really that needs to be done. There's only um, correcting our vision, which which tells us that the world is still here and the world needs to be saved. The world will end when its thought system has been completely reversed. Until then, bits and pieces of its thinking will still seem sensible. The final lesson which brings the ending of the world cannot be grasped by those not yet prepared to leave the world and go beyond its tiny reach. So you have to prepare, in some sense, you have to prepare, um, fulfill the conditions, this is the way that Jesus puts it, you fulfill, fulfill the con conditions necessary to, to arrive at the realization of what it is. Um, and and, and, and that means undoing your, the ego, and that means undoing your fear. Because the fear, um, I think that the truth of this is, and what Jesus is getting at, is that as you get closer to um, the truth, um, you know, it's always darkest before the dawn, it, you, you will be you will have to go through quite a bit to get to get to the to the final understanding 
and 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 so that takes take it's a little bit it's not just a little bit but it's a process right um what then is the function of the teacher of god in this concluding lesson he need merely learn how to approach it to be willing to go in its, in its direction so there's the willingness that is necessary even though you don't completely understand what the goal is but you're willing to to, to go there and you're willing to trust right He's, jesus says he need merely trust that in, if god's voice tells him it is a lesson he can learn he can learn it he does not judge it either as hard or easy so that's one uh, one thing i want to um say is that i'm not trying to say this is hard i'm just saying it it's um tends to be a process um we can't really say it's hard or easy sometimes jesus does say it's easy actually um given the course it's easier his teacher points to it and he trusts that he will show him how to learn it so if you if you are um, trusting and you are willing the means will be provided you know you will be shown the way Obviously, there was a point be before we knew about the course, right? In your life, there was a point before you even n knew that the course existed, and then the, then the course showed up, and it and it took you to the next step. <laughs> so so, and things have shown up that way all along the way, right? And uh, they will continue to show up to to take you where where you want to go. Um, the world will end in joy because of this place of sorrow. It will end in peace because of this place of war. It will end in laughter because of this place of tears. Um, only complete forgiveness and 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 reversing the thought system of the world means turning hell into heaven. Um, and I think, I think that, uh, <laughs> that, that's enough for now. Um, it's funny that, that Helen's name was Helen, <laughs> right? She was kind of like a mixture of hell, hell and heaven together. And I think she played on her name a bit. Um, but, um, you know, I think the, the 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 point that Jesus wants to make is that until until we do um, choose heaven, we are in hell. We don't we don't may not even realize it, but we are we are experiencing hell. Um, and you know, it's the difference between the two is is night and day. But um, you know the the. It, it 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 will that 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 will dawn upon us in due in due time so anyway i hope this has been helpful um and i will be continuing to read from the manual for teachers and also uh reading chapter 25 if you want to tune into that as well and i've, I've also been doing a um a reading the bhagavad gita in sanskrit and english if you want to check that out, um, there's a lot of def definitely a lot of parallels between the Gita and A Course in Miracles for those with a, with an eye to see. And I've been thinking about writing a book. Actually, um, I have actually started to write a um, the Bhagavad Gita in light of of A Course in Miracles. So, all right. Anyway, thanks for listening, and see you see you very soon. Adiós.